the recently landscaped centre at Barhead, where locals traditionally gathered for important events. It was here in 1951 that George filmed the town's official welcome home to the local amateur dramatic club, the Barhead Players. Margaret Forrest was a member of the Players in those days and she recalls the play and the reception they received. The play was called Displaced Persons and uh, we put it into the first festival at Paisley, which we won. Then we went to Glasgow, which we won. Then we went to Troon, Scottish finals, which we did win. But on our way to Troon, we had to take all our props and scenery in um, cattle float with all the open bars and the cast in the cattle float. So we went way down to Troon on a very cold day and the cast could only stand in the cattle float all the way down. Anyhow, it still won at Troon. So then we were off to the Howard of Walden trophy down in London and we had to get money, we had to make all sorts of, um, make toffee, sell this, and all sorts of things we put on to get money. We'd even we whisk drives and beetle drives and what have you. And when we got to London, the f first play that we saw there was actually an act from Private Lives, No Coward, which was very well done. And we thought, well, we don't have a hope against this. But we did go and we managed to win, and it was absolutely fantastic. The play was about an old folks' home, and there were three old men. There was the gentleman, there was the rogue, rascal, comedian, and then there was my grandfather in the play who was turning senile. So the visitors came in and all the parts were cameo parts and there were tremendous parts to play. My part was the granddaughter of the senile old man and I was asked to go and see the doctor who told me that they were going to put him out and take him, as I thought, to the asylum. So I went back in and decided that my grandfather was not going to the asylum and I took him home. But when we came home, we won a number of trophies and we just came home and nobody bothered about us. So when we came off the train, there was a provost and councillors and, well, my mother and father and I don't know how many people, and we got such a surprise coming off the train. So they told us there were buses waiting for us and we thought, that's all right. But when we came to the bottom of the town, we were told that we were to get out of the buses and there was a lorry waiting for us and we'd get up onto this lorry. And I'm afraid I was a bit embarrassed at going onto the lorry. But there were so many people. And then as we came through the town, it was really just as if the local football club had won, had beaten Rangers and Celtic and won the Premier Trophy. The whole town was out. When we got to the centre, it was absolutely crammed. It, it's just, it was absolutely fantastic, unbelievable. It was a tremendous thrill, and by this time, of course, I was thoroughly enjoying myself. But um, it was the first time in 17 years the trophy had come to Scotland, so it really was a wonderful thrill for Scotland, too. And uh, everybody then sent to the Barhead Centre, and uh, the local officials, um, and Mr Hutchison being the provost at that time, officially congratulated them and greeted them on behalf of the townspeople. It attracted so much interest that even the newsreel company had taken an interest. But the Paramount newsreel cameraman was there and took his photographs, which was eventually rushed away and, and processed and brought back for showing at the weekend at the Centre Cinema and uh, all in all of course uh, it was really a great, great occasion that took place. This is a copy of the original newsreel but we can't see it at the local cinema anymore. Although the Centre Cinema building is still there, it's now a bingo hall and hasn't shown films for many years. There are now no cinemas left in Barhead, but Mary Edser remembers in 1951 when there were two cinemas and going to the cinema was very popular. 
There were a few things that were better in those days in as much as you had local things you could go to more. We, we did a lot of dancing, in, in the church dancing, but the main thing for everyone was the cinema, the pavilion theatre as it was called, in Main Street Barhead, quite near Donny's Bray. And they had, they had children's matinees on a Saturday for the children. And of course, you were quite well off when you could go to the balcony. <laughs> it, it was, I think, a penny for the matinee and tuppence for the balcony. That I don't know how long that would maybe be before. Oh yes, that would be before fifty-one. But latterly, everyone went to the cinema at least once a week. Saturday evening, you had to queue to get in. There were two houses. Then we were very fortunate. We got another cinema at the centre in Barhead, and with it a beautiful restaurant. It was really lovely. The amenities in it were, were super. We were all so delighted with it. But now it's not even used now. It was made into a bingo hall. But fortunately, <laughs> it's been closed. Don't know what's going to happen with it. But Barhead lost something when they lost their cinema, as we all did. I mean, people still go to town to cinema, but we wouldn't be bothered trailing. But when you have a local cinema, and you met all your friends coming out, they're going in, and if you had a boyfriend, you know, it was just a place to go. <laughs> Cowan Park is where the annual Barhead Gala is held. It was started in 1951 for a special reason, as Hugh Waters explains. The ambulance service wasn't too great, and if anyone in Barhead uh, was suddenly taken ill or there was an accident or anything like that, we do wait an ambulance coming from uh, now, mostly it, the ambulance would come from the Victoria Infirmary mm -hmm. in Langside rather than from Paisley. Although Paisley is now the REH and Paisley um, services a Barhead community, at that time the main hospital for Barhead was the Victoria Infirmary. So that if um, there was an accident, then you had to wait the ambulance coming from Langside. Uh, which took some considerable time because traffic, uh, although it wasn't as busy, it was much slower uh, getting along. So there was a considerable wait, and this always annoyed the people of Barhead. So eventually they decided, all right, let's stand in our own two feet, let's buy our own ambulance. And this is how the, the whole thing started. So someone then resurrected the idea of the old cooperative galas. Uh, now these galas were an annual social event, uh, one of the social events of the year, uh, when all the school children would um, parade through the main street, arrive at the Cowan Park, and there was all sorts of games and activities laid on for the youngsters of the community. The actual 1951 gala was a sort of, had going to be a highlight of this fundraising event to buy an ambulance from Barhead, a for Barhead, so that uh, if anything happened, then we wouldn't have a, our own ambulance on the spot. And the the whole thing was suddenly, uh, everyone was delighted that uh, well, uh, now at last, after all these years, the gala was going to be resurrected. And we had a gala queen, Jean Ryan, uh, a very, very uh, good choice. She wrote queenly in everything uh, she was doing, and she paraded uh, through the town, starting from the drill hall. Now, the drill hall at that time was now is now the United Services Club, and they had their own pipe band. They had, I think it was the Kyle and Southern Highlanders. Uh, they formed the, the pipe band, and they led the parade magnificent spectacle it was. But also at Barhead at that time there was a section of the Rover Scouts and they had their own pipe band. Plus of course we had the Barhead Borough Band. Uh, so they had three bands at that time in Barhead.
Sadly, after this, the gala queen ceremony slipped into abeyance. Twenty-two years were to pass before Hugh Waters was asked to form a committee to resurrect it. Small committee. Uh, I think it would be seven or eight people in the committee to start with uh, to take on a very big task. But however, the, um, the overall gala was a great success and it has gone on then from 1970. Uh, three right up until the present time. It was here in 1951 at Ockenbach, George filmed the first annual garden fit. The Ockenbach, eh, of course, the first gala day that had eh, the usual side shows and stalls and eh, Wheel of Fortune, such, such like kind of entertainments and uh, it was all declared open by eh, Mr. McDermott, who was uh, council in the council at that particular time, and Mrs. Hutchison, then uh, she was also there on the platform, and all of the, the local bands then turned up and made it quite a joyous afternoon occasion. Over the years, the Ochenbach Fets fell away. Few now even remember they happened. Everyone enjoys a good day out, and this is what our next sequence is all about. This is Belle Isle Park Hotel in Ayr, the setting for the pensioners' outing, when once again George's camera was put to good use. How we had agreed to do that photographing of the pensioners outing uh, there again Mr Hutchison and the uh, council was uh, anxious that there should be a record made at least of one of the trips out so the, this particular one was fortunately enough when a fine summer's day and uh, the pensioners were taken to Belle Isle in there. 